Hello, hello, everybody. It's 7.10 p.m. Central Time on the 18th of February, 2023. It's Saturday here in the United States, Sunday already internationally. I hope you're doing well. And we are here to talk about seismic events. In case you don't know where you're at, you're on the Earthquake 3D live stream, which is being recorded now on Twitch. I'll be uploading to YouTube as soon as I'm done here live. But we do have a few earthquakes to talk about that have spread across the United States, as well as over in Europe. And we have a flurry of new deep earthquake activity taking place. Looks like a pincushion of deep earthquakes raised high off the globe all the way across the West Pacific, over into the Mideast. But first things first, I'd like to talk about Europe again and what's going on down here at Turkey. And a new outbreak of mid-range fives, 5.3, 5.2, broke out at central Turkey going south along the plate boundary again. Now, I was looking about 200 miles east of Istanbul and about 200 miles west of where the 7.8 originally broke. We're about 75 miles west and about 350, maybe 400 miles to the east. So I'm about 200 miles off and about a half magnitude. We were looking for this to go back up in magnitude. We were in the 4 range for several days, and now it went back up. Why did we go back up to 5.2-ish, 5.3-ish? We have to go back two days, three days at the most, go back to the start of the week, and let me wait for the feed to refresh here. You should be able to see it. There we go. 5.1 to 5.2 plus a bunch of other fours broke out all the way around this five over in China. When that happened, told everybody to watch over to the west for a new somewhat larger outbreak to take place than the fours that have been going. Now, I'm still watching. We were looking for up to 5.9 to 6, and we get a 5.3 to 5.2 somewhere in the low end five instead of the high end five. Now, the same time that's going on, a outbreak of mid-range fours to near fives broke out across Europe, going all the way up into Romania, down here on the coast of Greece at the Ionia range, and then back up into Croatia yesterday. So that's a spread of fives, or mid-range fours, going across all of Europe and our expected areas. A little bit of the energy is escaping out, obviously, and going up into the plate boundary, over to the west, over into Italy. Let me show it to you on a USGS plate boundary map. This should help for all new viewers who've never seen this before. The red lines here are boundaries between plates. And we have, for instance, Africa and Europe. And then in between them, we have the plate boundary. It goes right up and into a pinnacle point where Turkey broke. Now, it's been breaking all the way across between the two plate boundaries, one coming out of Iran, going over into Turkey, and then the USGS has a big open area here that's just connected by supposed small faults. Well, that's all given way to one big surface fissure fracture of 200 miles long along the Anatolia Fault, which we'll probably just start calling a plate boundary if it keeps moving the way it's moving. I mean, faults can become plate boundaries, or plate boundaries can be named faults like the San Andreas over in the United States, just to show you uh, San Andreas going along the West Coast. It's a fault, but it also is a plate boundary. Just as a point of reference, they may fill this in someday with a red line going between these two. Anyway, a spread of earthquakes going across Crete, up into Greece, up into Romania, and up into Croatia. This is along the edge of the European Craton. And we expect this when a push comes out of the Mideast and Turkey to follow these red lines go up into Italy, and then the USGS doesn't have anything there on their map. That's okay. Looking at our map here, you can see it. Going around the outside edge of the European Craton, we have a set of arrows telling you which way to watch for the flow to go. Now, it's come to my attention that Romanian officials were asked by several citizens on social media about a relation between the earthquakes down in Turkey and what just happened up in Romania. And they're saying there's no relation and blah, 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 and denying that there's any cause and effect Okay, well, we know that's not correct. Now, I'm going to tell everybody, it's not that one earthquake is causing the other. It's not that the 7.5 down in Turkey is causing the 6 and outbreak in Romania. But they're both related. There's a wave that goes between the two. So it's not one earthquake causing the other. It's that both sets of quakes 
The quakes up in Romania and the quakes down in Turkey are being caused by a spreading wave that's going through the whole plate and it's dropping off the earthquakes along the way. It got blocked, the wave got blocked down in Turkey and now it's been directed around the outside edge of Europe, the wave, and it's dropping off the sixes as it goes out towards Poland, out towards Iceland and the North Pole. And that will all take place, it, well, it already has, We've seen several little outbreaks take place up to Iceland and out to the Azores, but the flow is going now. You can see it now with fives going out across the plate pretty much around outside of edge of Europe. I would watch Poland next and then watch over here out into the North Sea right on the English Channel next to my people at Holland. Somebody in Turkey wrote me yesterday and asked me what to watch for. They are in Istanbul right here directly. I told them to watch 200 miles to the east for a new 5.9. That was last night. And today, 5.3 hit. All right. That is likely the earthquake we're looking for, but I don't think we're done yet. I think we're going to still go up again. In Turkey, in particular, take a look at what's going on now. There's a new 4 that struck just south of the Black Sea. So here we go, Black Sea, just south of it, and that's in central Turkey to the east along the coast. When they wrote me last night, I said, watch right around in here for a new 5.9, and instead of 5.3, hit right here next to it. Now, central Turkey is central Turkey all the way down to the coast and all the way up to the Black Sea, so central Turkey north got a 4. Central Turkey east got a 5.2. I'm still going to watch for the next five days for up to 5.9 to 6. That's based upon the flow that's coming in, the flow that's coming out of the West Pacific. And that gets me into the rest of the earthquakes that are striking. Take a look at it. All the new deep earthquakes, deep fours, deep fives, and they're going on our letter Ds. Letter D stands for deep earthquakes, where we watch. It's a forecast point where we watch for deep earthquakes to take place. And so we're not let down. The middles of the letter Ds are filled in again with new deep earthquakes. Deep 4.2 here reported by the Europeans, USGS. USGS also reporting these over here. So you can see them. It's a pincushion. Now there's one in the middle here. We don't have a letter D here. This is much more rare to get deep earthquakes where we don't see our letter Ds. The Ds are there because of observation. Ten years of observing, or when we put the Ds on here, it was more like five. Five years of observing led us to put the Ds on the map here. And we don't move the Ds. The Ds stay where they are. It's a spot where we regularly see new deep earthquakes come up and then spread out. That's why it matters when we see a whole bunch of them. Now, something's getting ready to happen, I think. Let's go over to my YouTube channel and show you. Check it out in case you missed it. A new X2.2 class solar flare supposedly happened. Again, I, I, people tell me they think this is CGI. Well, it is. It's a computer image that's a digital image. I don't know whether it's real or not. I would think it probably is. You could probably get a good telescope on the ground. I mean, it would probably cost millions of dollars or whatever, but I'm thinking you could probably get a telescope to look at the sun and probably verify whether or not the satellite or whatever view it is is accurate anyway this is supposedly a real view of the sun and there's the x2.2 class flare now i don't i can't tell you whether or not it's real or not guys all i can tell you is that within six days of these things happening we tend to see new deep earthquakes start to take place and huge earthquake activity following it up so Again, I mean, people can observe solar flares from the ground. That's how they used to do it before the supposed space stuff. So from the ground, you can observe solar flares. You have to watch all the time, and you have to use special lens to protect your eyes from the sun and so forth. But uh, apparently it can be done. It was done for hundreds of years. Anyway, uh, and, let, let, and it was done by people who even believed in flat Earth. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm not saying it's real or not. I'm not defending or shilling for NASA. I'm just here to tell you, X-Class Flare has been reported by... <laughs> we just look and see. Earthquakes are going to come in, and they are. We're seeing a new increase in new deep earthquakes take place across all of our letter Ds. That's in conjunction with the solar disturbance. Now, here's what's really going on. Solar flare happens. Charged particles can be released from the sun. And however far it is away, whether it's round or flat, doesn't matter. When those charged particles come in and hit Earth, they hit the upper ionosphere and upper atmosphere. And then it's literally like a matter of scuffing your feet across the carpet to pick up a charge. 
and in this case it's charged particles scuffing their feet across the carpet of the upper atmosphere and ionosphere and it builds into what we call northern lights the northern lights and southern lights the aurora the green and so forth sometimes red air glow that starts when so much charged particle activity is taking place in the upper atmosphere that it starts to glow now that glowing charged air or atmosphere gets picked up the electrical gets picked up and taken down to ground and ground is literally ground it's the crust but it's really the core of the earth electrically speaking that all that power goes into the earth it goes down to the core or wherever it goes down to the center of whatever and then after that it comes back up within a few days guess how long this whole process takes it takes three days for the charged particles to get here about another day of air glow so the northern lights going on for about a day then the charge goes down to ground then two days after that so it's about a week two to three days to get here two to three days to have an effect so within six days or seven days of a big solar flare coronal mass ejection filament rupture or open coronal hole sending a strong wind towards earth all of those tend to have a buffeting effect on the earth's magnetosphere the scuffing their feet across the carpet whether it's a strong solar wind when i think of this when i think of a solar storm from a solar flare with a cme it's like wind strong wind with heavy rain mixed in with the charged particles you can get strong wind on its own that's bad but if you mix in a bunch of heavy rain, it's more like a hurricane. And that's what happens when we get charged particle storms coming towards Earth. Now, they're saying this one's going to be minimal, glancing blow. It's off the limb, the west, or I'm sorry, the eastern limb, the left-hand side of the sun. And it may or may not be a glancing blow off Earth within a couple days. Keep watch. That's why we post this on my channel in particular Whenever there's a solar event, we watch for a few days afterwards for a big increase in seismic. Okay? If I'm talking about huge earthquakes within the next six days, we'll know there's a relation between the big X-class flare and... Right? Another example, there was a big X-class flare a few days before the Japan mega quake in 2011. And it sent a shockwave going all the way across the sun. It was on the western limb or the right-hand side going right over the edge of the sun out from the view of earth and this giant x-class flare happened a few days before the japan quake about four or five days i want to say okay uh now that all being said new deep earthquakes spreading in between the deep earthquakes fives 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 going over to our next 6.1 this is the third 6.1 maybe fourth this week let's show you the rest there we go 6.1 down here in the Kermadec Islands followed by a 6.1 down here in New Zealand they downgraded that to 5.7 on the Cook Strait next to Wellington but that's two right there yeah so there's four and then one here and one here one at Philippines first and then the most recent right here at the S-shaped plate boundary Papua New Guinea going into Indonesia check that off the list if you were keeping track of areas which I warned we warned here for up to 6.5 and we got a 6.1 this actually came in right at 6.5 or did I warn for 6.9 oh no I don't have it written down I'd have to go back and listen it was either 6.5 or 6.9 that I issued the warning here for so I'll have to go back and listen guys either way we are within the magnitude on the earthquake hitting this came in at 6.5 they downgraded it to 6.1 so two 6.1s here, two 6.1s down here. What's going on? That's four 6.1s. Well, oh, and like I said, New Zealand downgraded theirs to 5.7. But that's four 6.1s in the course of as many days, four days. So it's the same size to earthquake activity spreading out from all the way up the Philippines, down to Indonesia, back down through New Zealand. This whole section moved on a 6.1 basis in the last four days. Why? We got a deep 6.1 down below the area. And then up above it, same size movement. 6.1's up above. So it's not shallower, larger movement in this case. It's shallower movement that's the same size, but it spreads out. How many thousands of miles do you even think that is? Going from Philippines this way down to Indonesia. That right there is like 2,000 miles. And then over to the east, that's another like five 
and then down to the south that's like another four or five thousand miles so we're talking about one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve we're talking about like fifteen thousand linear miles if we go around the bend of the plate that moved or maybe not that much 10,000 linear miles that moved on a 6.1 basis all the way down and around down and around what <clears throat> down and around this oh excuse me hold on one second Ahem. Ahem. <coughs> that's what happens when you smoke kids that's why you shouldn't do it what am i smoking i don't know depends on what time of day it is let's go and take a look around the indo-australian plate india i had a yoda moment there right I, I, look 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 there is another All right, so the uh, the India, the Indo-Australian plate going around the outside edge, you can see it. Okay, you can see the earthquakes, I mean, but the deep earthquakes. Look, deep earthquake here, deep earthquakes on our letter D here, and up here at Japan, like a pincushion. So something is going on down below, and the 6.1s up above are a symptom of what's spreading from up down below. 6.1's worth of energy went all the way up to Philippines and all the way down to New Zealand. That's what I'm getting at. And we are not done. We have a new round of deep earthquakes going on now. Those are the whitish and pinkish colored earthquakes raised high up the globe. I think we're getting ready to go through it. I think we're getting ready to take the next step up. I think we're ready to go up to a step of sevens around the West Pacific. And I think I'm going to have to do a new forecast by tomorrow in light of the new X2 solar flare that happened. I definitely need to warn everybody in the West Pacific, going from Japan back down all the way to Solomon Islands. We're going to see a flurry of sevens, even going over to the West, over into Sumatra, Indonesia, right here. So I've got to get my act together and get this out into a war. You could pretty much consider this the start of the forecast. Now, if you're listening now, guys, we're going to be most likely seeing a flurry of sevens, not just one, over in the West Pacific, probably two. And when I a flurry, right, two. Anytime you get more than one big earthquake in an area or a region, that's what I consider to be a flurry or an increase. And the spots where we watch are pretty simple to figure out now. We can look and see these giant open areas in between our sets of quakes between this 4.3 and this 4.4. We go around the bend of the plate. It's a big open area there. Mount Krakatau, Mount Kerinci, Mount Semeru are all right in here, and I think they're actually moving today. Let's go see over on the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center what's going on. Let's see. Ah, Karangitang. Karangitang in Indonesia showed back up with a 10,000-foot high blast. Okay. Reventador in Ecuador. Semeru in Indonesia, 14,000. But again, it sounds like a lot, but it's a 10,000-foot high peak. So it's like four or 5,000-foot high blast going off the top of the volcano. The way they measure these is from ground level, though. So... Like, for instance, Ducona's like 2,000 feet high, and it's a 7,000-foot high blast. So, really, it's like a 5,000-foot blast, you see? Anyway, uh, we start seeing huge blasts, I'll tell you. Okay, Karangatang is back on the list. Cotopoxy, Hotopoxy, Sotopoxy, Popocate Patal in Mexico, Fuego in Guatemala, Sanjay in Ecuador, and so forth. I'm looking for any new additions. Like, Karangatang is new to the list. It hasn't been on in many, many weeks, or a few months even. Shivalush up in Russia and Semeru back in Indonesia all right that matters let's show you where they are so Semeru right here okay Java Semeru's in Java we go over to Karangatang it's over here the S-shaped plate boundary then we go to the north we go all the way up to Japan where we have Sakurajima and Suwanizajima going in South Japan we go further to the north. We get up here, and we have nothing going on all the way across the entire Kuril Islands. Getting up into Kamchatka, that's where Shivalush is erupting. So we've got one, two, three, four, five volcanoes erupting across this side of the Pacific. Then on the east side of the Pacific, we have Popocate Patal going in Mexico. Skip over the rest of Central America. 
get back down to South America, and we have Sanjay and Reventador both going in Ecuador. Sabancaya going down in South Peru. Okay, one, two, three, four on the other side of the plate. So that's low. I'll just say it. Five on one side, four on the other. It's somewhat equal, though, that we tend to see. If we see five on one side, we tend to see like four or five on the other. There's only a few times where we go out of balance volcanically, and when that happens, boom, we get big earthquake activity. Big earthquake activity accompanies the volcanic activity. So you have to check the volcano feed to see if there's any new volcanoes on the list. It tells you a spot to watch. The only thing that I see that's new is Kurang showing. As we go up to the north, Japan, Taiwan, Philippines. Well, like I said, there's going to be two sevens, and the other seven should be striking between here. So we're going to be going back to central Philippines, to north Philippines, for a potential extremely large earthquake this week. It's the open silent zone. Look, again, think of this like a two-arm scale where we've got earthquakes on one side and earthquakes on the other. And in the middle is where the break is going to happen. It's where the fold and the bend of the plate is. We have a volcano there. Uh, oh, boy, what's the name of that volcano? Boy, I can't remember the name of it. Oh, no. Marapi? Ah, they're going to kill me for not remembering this. Let me zoom in and see. Turn back on my place marks. I'm going to remember this just because... Mayon. Mayon. All right. Can't win them all. Bulusan and Mayon are right next to the spot in the fold in the bend of the plate. Morapi must be somewhere else. All right. Definitely an M word. Klatu Verata Necktie, guys. <laughs> Nickel. Klatu Verata. I, it's definitely N. I, I, okay, anyway. Going up to the north, we have a series of the same sized earthquakes that have been going across the rest of the Pacific. Check it out, 4.8, 4.9, 4.8, 4.9. Going up to the north, 4.8, 4.9. And then going all the way up into Kamchatka, 4.8 to 4.9. As we go over to the east, we take a step down into the Aleutian Island chain. We take a step down to fours, mid-range fours, and then threes. We go across the whole state of Alaska. Now check it out, look at this. One magnitude under, guys. I'm one magnitude under, but I want to go pull the coordinates. Go see how close we are. I warned the basin around Harp. I'm a magnitude off, but I just want to go see how close I am. I'm not bragging, but I got to tell you, the reason I warned up here isn't because of Harp. It's just because of the other flow, the seismic flow, that's coming through the area. I just mentioned Harp as the reference point that we watch to. There's Harp. Here's the basin. Let's see how many miles that is. I'm trying to get it within 200 miles, but Alaska is huge, so this might be more than 200 miles. At no, 102 miles. Let's go look in on Harp, see how it looks on there. You know, they used to black this out with a big black bar and say it didn't exist. You know that, right? They used to have a big black censorship bar over this thing. It said it didn't exist. 2010, didn't exist. No, wait, hold on. No, no, no. 2007 didn't exist but it was built and there was pictures of it but didn't exist no pictures of it from an aerial view why does it matter right oh it's only for ionospheric research da, 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 da. let's go up across alaska go up here to the north slope guess what's up here the north slope of course but do you know why they built harp Bernard Eastland, Dr. Bernard Eastland, who holds the patent on the ionospheric heater to generate very low frequency, it was to look into the ground for oil deposits so they didn't have to do like actual exploration drilling that they could look down and see where oil deposits are. So uh, how does that work, right? How do you use high frequency from a ground station all the way down here to look down into the ground up here on the northern slope to find oil deposits? Well, they use the high frequency to beam up to the ionosphere and upper atmosphere, somewhere up here above. Think of this three-dimensionally. Well, here, let me turn it three-dimensionally. Oh, yeah, I know there's going to be a bunch of people who are like, Ah, oh, Dutch Earth isn't a right Whatever, dude. I'm just trying to show an example. So they're beaming up at an angle up above Alaska, and they'll use the high frequency to excite the upper ionosphere into an area just like the northern lights and the sun 
does, but it's in a pocket or a bubble that's maybe 10 kilometers across at the most. So many kilometers or a couple, few miles across they will take and they will shoot the high frequency up there, billion watts, which excites and scuffs its feet across the carpet of the atmosphere, building a charge in the atmosphere in a bubble. That bubble then vibrates like a bass drum and they can turn it and tilt it and target it based upon the modulation, the amount of power they put through the antennas down here can bend and twist it and move it around up here. And then they can target it like a dish. And it's called an artificial ionospheric mirror, AIM. And the, simply put, it generates very low frequency like a bass drum. And that low frequency can be targeted out to an area and down into the crust where it reflects and comes back like a radar image of the inner crust. And they can see deep underground military bases, cave systems, tunnels, and oil deposits. That's when the military got involved. And so, why am I telling you about the oil deposits? Well, right here where the earthquake is, right next to it, there's this place. Let me zoom in and show you. See these towns that are right up in here? See the little airstrips and the little spots there? Okay. There's a large pumping operation that goes all the way along the coast here, and I'm not exaggerating. I'll take you in and show you at ground level. This place is called Prudhoe Bay, and they've actually taken the Google car through the oil pumping town. Just to, it, it's, it's actually amazing that they've got the Google car up here but not going through central Missouri. And they've got the barracks up here or whatever you want to call them where they all sleep and uh, you got the oil rigs and all that stuff. Okay, we can go around town here if you want to. Look at this one. The Aroto Oil Field Hotel is what this place is called. Or no, I'm sorry. Arctic. Aroto. It looked like A-R-O-T-O. -O. <laughs> Old man needs his glasses. <laughs> and it says Aroto there. No, it says Arctic, you freaking blind old man. I'm talking to myself. Third person. I needed to laugh, guys. It's been a rough week, man. Anyway, um, earthquake striking next to our oil pumping operations. And we're a magnitude under next to HARP. So what's going on? The flow is going down off the coast of the United States. Do you see the equidistant spacing of the same-sized earthquakes going down to the coast of the U.S.? In between, our three up to the north and our three down to the south is a 4.6 right off the coast of Vancouver Island which is a magnitude under as well of what I was looking for. I was looking for up to 5.5. Or did I say 5.9? Again, I have to go back and listen. It was either 5.5 or 5.9. Anyway, we're a magnitude under, and we're right next to Vancouver Island on the north side of the Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone. Now, the Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone is, they say, a separate plate. Whether it's a separate plate or a broken piece of North America or a broken piece of the Pacific, here it is. There's the jagged edges of the Pacific, and it points into the United States. And we get tension that builds out here on the north side. And then we see a flow come in and go down to the south side and across the edge of the North American Craton. And the earthquakes this week are doing just that. So let me just get the quakes for all the small quakes, everything. This is just the last two days. Let's turn off our magnitude so you can really see it. Last two days of quakes. Notice anything? Ha! Let's turn our magnitudes back on. Check, check it out. Two of the same size quakes. One down in Texas, one off the coast of Vancouver. 4.6 and 4.7. Following that craton. The deformed part, the purple part, transfers the energy over across. And look, we go up the east coast. This is two days worth of quakes, guys. Isn't it? I mean, it's a perfect match. Going out of the northwest, down to Texas, across, and over and up the east coast. Now, the East Coast. Is everybody listening? East Coast. First of all, let me turn off the Craton graphic now that you've seen it. Look at the East Coast on the Craton graphic there. See where it goes? See where the Craton goes? Okay. Now, look at the quakes. There's been a third train derailment, guys. A third one. Now, let me take you back to the start of the week up here to the north. First, there was a train derailment at the Ohio-Pennsylvania border region. And that's where the vinyl chloride was released. Polyvinyl chloride. Turns out that I just found out that stops blood coagulation. 
It can be used to treat, like, reduce coagulation of the blood. Anyway, what are the chances of that, right? Anyway, huge train derailment of vinyl chloride here. And then when it happened that night, I got on and told everybody to watch out for new seismic activity next to where the train derailed, just in case. I didn't know if there would be or not. And I said we should watch for up to 4.0, a rare 4 to hit. And this is based upon past train derailments. Train derailment followed by earthquake. So what happened? Within a day, the next day, a 3.8 struck right here on the red arrow. Train derailment on the back end of the arrow. Next day, 3.8 strikes just to the north, just as expected. Then a second train derailment happened down here at South Carolina. NRE, South Carolina. Right there at the South Carolina, North Carolina border region. Okay. And what happened? Followed by two single earth, two, well, two single earthquakes. Two earthquakes a day apart in the same state. Okay. So followed by seismic. Now a third train derailment happened up here, right at Detroit, right at the border of Canada and the United States. Now, need I remind everybody what happened up there? Let me show you in case you didn't know or forgot. Up here, just north of Detroit, is where our methane bursts happened. Here's Detroit right here. T city of Detroit. Let me turn on my place mark so you can see it. There we are. There's Detroit. This, this place right here. Methane started coming out of the ground here. And it was bubbling up in mass. It looked like some kind of pipeline had broken. It was coming out of the ground. It turns out there's methane deposits in the ground. Layers of biological material on the Great Lakes that break down over time and build up into methane pockets. Well, the plate started to shift. And we got the methane geyser that blew there. And then over on the East Coast, we get mystery explosions and train derailments. This is several years ago. This happened. It all happened in conjunction with one another. Mystery explosions, booms and rumbles, earthquakes, and train derailments. That happened over and over and over and over and over again enough times that I started to document it. And people said it was just chance and coincidence. That was back in 2014 and 2015, I think. You remember, guys, everybody said it was chance and coincidence, and I was trying to make a buck off a train derailment. I didn't even have ads on my shit at the time. Pardon my language. Didn't even have ads on my thing. I wasn't trying to make anything. It was just showing that the earthquakes are going to cross the plate, and we get followed up. Again, boy, we got the train derailments, and then they're followed with earthquakes. Here it is again. Now, today, a new 2.6 struck in Ohio at the Ohio-West Virginia border to top it all off. Cheshire, Ohio and a very shallow depth right at the surface. Now look, we start getting surface earthquakes and people wonder why there's trains derailing. I mean, come on, like, this is just putting your head in the sand or something. We could blame other people. People were trying to say it could be terrorism or something, but what do we got going on here? All right, well, let's back it out and take a look. Here we are in Ohio. We have fracking operation up in the north. Isn't that great? Oh, isn't that wonderful? I wonder if there's fracking going on right here. Ohio does fracking. We'd have to look on the Ohio. Well, West Virginia is actually, aren't they known for it too? Is what? What is this? Hold on. Ah, high voltage power lines. Look at this. The giant power plant. The giant coal-fired power plant producing a large amount of electricity. We're right across the river from it. Why am I making a big deal about that? I've documented this now for 10 years. Since the Japan mega quake next to Fukushima power plant, the nuclear power plant over in uh, Japan. We've seen this over and over and over again, where power plants, whether they're coal fired, let me show you another example of where this happened up here. Right along the Great Lakes, right up here. There's a coal fired power plant, earthquake struck right off the coast. I'll have to find the coal fire power plant to, to show you. But you guys will remember what uh, it was right in here somewhere. Anyway, coal fire power plant and earthquake right off the coast. Uh, it's happened over in Europe, happens over in Japan, happens all around the world. It turns out the power that we're generating is very low frequency, and it's flowing through power lines on the surface, like a circuit board. And Mother Nature produces very low frequency, ultra low frequency, extremely low frequency, and it's an electrically induced seismic wave that's passing through the plate. So you combine the two, and guess what starts to happen? 
Mother Nature's wave is guided by these surface features and power generating facilities. Also, railroads sometimes become charged enough that they do it too with the earthquakes. Power lines, railroads, and it's not just coal-fired power plants, guys. It's nuclear power plants, coal-fired power plants, wind power turbines, and solar and hydroelectric. The hydroelectric mainly happens on the West Coast where we got a lot of hydroelectric dams, earthquake striking right next to them. Okay, wow. Glad I looked it up. Wow, I wouldn't have known. So I'm going to keep an eye on Detroit. I'm going to keep an eye on the East Coast. We're going to keep an eye for potential new earthquake activity. Also keep an eye out for those mystery booms and rumbles, which they'll try and blame on Everything except for a shift of the plate. They don't want people to know the plate's shifting because they said it couldn't. Isn't that funny? They said the plate couldn't shift while they tell you that it moves. Doesn't shift suddenly. Oh, really? Well, a wave goes across it and causes vibrations, mystery booms and rumbles, train derailments, explosions, and other things like that. Geophysically speaking, there is a connection. I've documented it now for year upon year upon year upon year, ignoring it's asinine at this point. Now, let me bring up the Craytown again because Southern Colorado got hit. In case you didn't catch it, we did issue a warning for Southern Colorado. Let's go down and take a look and see where we are. Look how they have this listed. It just says Colorado. Isn't that wonderful? That's real science -y right there. That's true science right there. Let me get a sip of coffee while you think about that science. Let me show you some science. You, look at this science. Look at this raging science right here. We're going to follow our clue. Raging science. What's this raging science I'm talking about? Look at all these drill points here. Lots of drill points down in southern Colorado, right along the edge of the Craton. Oil and gas. Now, the good news is, is they passed a state regulation that requires them to put a shed over the well to protect the pump from being blocked. But I hate to break it to you. Just south of the border here, down in New Mexico, they don't have the regulation. So literally, you go right over the border, and you got these exposed open wells and pipelines. You can see the shadow of the jack of the pump. Colorado, they're building a shed around them now, you know? More pretty for the environment. You don't want to see the shadow of the jack of the pump from Ariel. Anyway, look. Look how far it goes. This is in Colorado. It just goes and goes on and on and on and on. And there's the Colorado border. Now, finally, take a look at the graphic. Look at the Craytown Edge. It goes right down through Colorado, doesn't it? Then it makes a bend through Texas. Back up over into the New Madrid, back up to the East Coast. But it's a perfect match, guys. It really is. So this is my biggest discovery, aside from forecasting earthquakes directly, that there's a flow of seismic energy that goes around the plates as opposed to directly through them. And then that means there's actually some kind of physical flow of something that's going around something as opposed to through it. It's not just displacing the whole plate. It's going around the plate. And it's dropping off the same sized earthquakes within a hair of a point all the way across the plate. This means we should see something like a mid-range 4 strike over on the east coast pretty soon here. We got a 4.7 coming across the plate. So a 4's worth of energy is going across. So far, mid-range 2's have reached over to the east coast. I'll just go ahead and issue the warning now for the far northeast. Up here by Maine, Quebec, New York, New Hampshire. New Hampshire! Vermont! Vermont! The people's earthquake! You've got a 4.5 coming. It's for the people. You can share it equally. <laughs> Since you're into all that up there. <laughs> I'm on a roll tonight, guys. I've been it's all bottled up. I freaking had the worst week of my life. Family member died. Dude, thank you for your well wishes, guys. It's been the it's literally it's been the worst week. Um man. Let's go down to the south and go down into California. First of all, an earthquake or a series of small earthquakes has been reported in Oregon. For the first time in 10 years, we get an earthquake reported in Oregon. Let's go take a look and see. Okay, that's a slight exaggeration. For the first time in 10 days, we get an earthquake reported in Oregon. Where is it? Ah, it's at Newberry Crater. Newberry Crater is a volcano. You can take a look at it. It's very well known. It's not going to erupt. Those are two basins on either side, and this is a 
giant cone in the center, but there's really cool glass flows on either side that came out and flowed down. You see, I broke out there and flowed down, broke out here and flowed down. So apparently this erupts semi-regularly every few hundred to few thousand years. And in this case, it looks like effusive lava flows that happened in these two. And apparently this thing blew at some point in the past as well. So two different kinds of things can happen there. But I don't think anything's going to happen there now. I think it's getting slightly disturbed for the same reason that Mount St. Helens up to the north is getting hit. And that Mount Rainier is getting hit. Hey, look, they listed it as Mount St. Helens area. That'll help researchers to understand that it's at Mount St. Helens. Since they're all so lazy, they don't look it up. Every researcher in the world is the biggest lazy butthead in the world. They literally don't look up the quakes and, and they just... They rely on somebody else telling them where it is. Anyway, inside, oh, like who's going to take the coordinates and put them in except for Dutch Sense on YouTube, right? Anyway, uh, there we are. Mount St. Helens inside the crater. That's where this stack of quakes is. And south of the actual volcano. Up here to the north, we're at Mount Rainier. Now, I wish they would just list this as Mount Rainier area. It would help the people to understand that these are up below the crater of Mount Rainier. Why does it matter if we're below the crater of Mount Rainier? Or for the same reason it matters that we're down below Mount St. Helens, I guess. Two volcanoes side by side having earthquakes down below. We should pay attention to that, shouldn't we? And if you see an in increase in the number of earthquakes, and then you look over here and you start to see an increase as well, I would say all the volcanoes from there to there are connected if they're about the same sized earthquakes in the same day. And what's going on here? Well, the biggest of the bunch struck over on the Wasatch Fault. But is it really the Wasatch? Notice how they just have it listed as Utah. A note where the earthquake. And where? Where was it? Oh, Utah. Where in Utah? Doesn't matter, does it? Does it? It don't matter, Dutch. Get her done. Get her done. Hey, guess what's right here? You guys know what's right here? It's called the Great Salt Lake. Salt Lake City. But there's something else right here. Do you see these? Hold on. Let me zoom in and show you. All right. Wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. See these? See this? Hey, it says A-T-K. Rocket Garden. Now, you see what these are? These are actual deep bunkers where ATK Orbital Systems stores and Thiokol Corporation, and they do the rocket, but they got the deep mines here. They got the deep mines at ATK Orbital and Thiokol Corporation. And they got the bunkers. These are bunkers. Check it out. To store the shit. Ah, just chance. It is just chance, Mr. Sense. Yes. Uh-huh. Chance. I'm doing bunny years right now. Chance. It's chance, Dutch. Don't ask any questions. It's a private company. I can't, thank God. Thank God it's not the U.S. government. Otherwise, I get shut down. I hit the power to my freaking house. All right, let's go down to the south. California. Line of earthquakes going along the coast. We have a big stack of earthquakes at this spot here north of the Bay Area. Guess what's there? A volcano. A volcano. Oh, no. No, don't worry, guys. It's not going to erupt. Hey, what's going on? Looks like some kind of earthquake struck down in Ecuador. We'll have to wait and see what's going on there. I had a warning going in Ecuador. Wait and see. It might just be a small quake. It's a little scrolling thing at the top of the screen. I didn't see what the magnitude is. All right, take a look at the screen. Here we are. We're at a volcano north of the Bay Area. It's called Clear Lake Volcano on Mount Konoktai. Konoktai! I said it was Konokti. People tried to correct me. I'm like, jeez, man. All right, there we go. I'll learn how to pronounce things by the time I'm 80. 47 now. There we go. Geothermal turbines on the side of the volcano. Why are we stacked up there? It's a weak point. There's a flow of earthquakes going through the area. Seeks out that point, center point. Wouldn't you say that's roughly the center of this whole line of quakes going along the entire San Andreas from up here along the coast? 
down here all the way to the valley, 2.2. In the middle, the swarm. Hey, wait a second, 3.1? Weren't we just talking about a 3.1 over here in Utah? That's two 3.1s. Aren't they parallel to each other? Interesting. Let's go down along the creeping section of the San Andres. We're down here south of the Bay Area. You see this line of quakes? You guys have heard of the San Andreas, right? Do you want to see it? Psst. Hey, you want to see San Andreas? Take a look. Take a look. Look at this. There's the San Andreas. It goes down to the east by southeast. The earthquakes go right down over and jump over to the valley. We go down, jump over to the valley. What's over in the valley? Kettleman City. Uh-oh. I recall hearing about Kettleman City before. The USGS did a whole conference. It's on their YouTube page. And it's about subsidence. Hold on. Let's go get it. Hold on. This is going to be fun. We're going to go on a little sleuthing adventure. USGS. There it is. Dar she blows the great white. I'm, I'm Ahab. Side and there it is. There she is. Public Talk 3 2019 Land Subsidence. Now, check it out. In this presentation, this person put a lot of time and effort into researching severe subsidence out in the valley, out in California. And look where we're talking about. The same spot that I'm showing you right here. She talks about the area starting at Kettleman City. So let's turn the borders and labels back on. For the USGS to use the word severe anything, severe subsidence, she talks about it being severe. Up to 40 feet has dropped. The whole area has gone down. The roads, the bridges, everything, the houses. Anyway, uh, she shows it right there. See, land subsidence, 2008 to 2010. This is in inches now. 21 inches, 16 to 21 inches just in a few years' time, in, in two years' time, sinking at the center of San Joaquin Valley, going up to the north from Kettleman City down to Bakersfield. Okay, well, let's show you. Kettleman City down to Bakersfield. From here to here, and everything down here severely subsiding. 12 inches in one spot, that a foot in another. In two years' time, it's sinking that much. What's there? Take a look. See these? Let me zoom in some more. Maybe I need to zoom in some more. There. What are those? Those are oil wells. Lots of them. Tens of thousands of them. And they go in a line this way all the way up the valley and across over to here where we have whole mountain ranges that have been done that way and then we go along the san andreas here here's the san andreas our earthquakes come down and jump over to kettleman city kettleman city earthquake attractor now look the reason they made it an earthquake attractor is to get the oil but Come on, when you start drilling like this. Come on, what do you want to do? What do you want to say? It's a perforation. We're going down the San Andreas, but it's easier for this seismic wave, wave to jump over and go down this way at an angle, down to the east southeast. And then all of a sudden, they act so surprised. Like, like, they act so surprised, you know? Now check it out. Right at the end, they do question and answers. This is perfect. Check this dude out. This guy. He's my freaking hero. He looks like freaking Brad Pitt. This guy looks like Brad Pitt. Check him out. I'm not kidding. So they're taking questions and answers from all the shills, and they're all there praising her and talking. They, she blames it on water. She blames this on lack of water, not the oil. Then this guy gets up. Brad Pitt's brother. Wait for this. I'm not going to play what, what uh, come on. Come on, let's fast forward a little bit there. There he is, Brad Pitt's brother. All black, black leather. And he asks about the oil. And they cut him off. There's a moderator there that cuts him off. She starts to answer and he starts to ask. And they cut this dude off. And don't and, and blame it on water. 
<laughs> this dude, whoever this guy is, he's my freaking personal hero, dude. Whoever you are, man, big shout out for even attending that damn thing. Second shout out for your outfit, straight up Matrix. Third shout out, you actually look like a young Brad Pitt. And fourth, you raise the oil question. Dude, I wish I could have been there. Of course it's due to the freaking oil. It's not due to water. What kind of freaking brain dead moron would think that it's related to water when you have 50,000 oil wells that you're pumping stuff out of the ground and you get subsidence only around those spots? You'd literally have to be a freaking puppet of the system to not see that that is related. No offense, lady. Man, whatever. Let's go along the California-Nevada border. Man, I get all fired up when I say, oh, earthquakes are going down and going over to the spot where she's talking about. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why I'm still growing on YouTube after all this time. If only you had a geophysics teacher that would actually lay it out to you like this in class, you know. All right, let's go start up here in the north part of the valley. Let's go up and take a look. Shasta. Ah, nothing go wrong here. Strato volcano. Shasta Lake. We're actually to the south of the actual volcano. Let's go see what's there. This is the biggest volcano in Northern California, and I think maybe on the West Coast. I don't know. It's huge. There it is. Mount Shasta. Yes, that town is, the, the town next to it is called Weed. But Mount Shasta. And we're on the... I mean, that's pretty far away. I always look within 40 miles, so I just want to see how far away Lake Shasta is. That's 47. The reason I look within 40 miles or so is because we can see a shift of a magma chamber or of the surface pretty far, many, many miles over the course of many thousands of years. So there could be a feeder. For instance, it comes up to the surface up here at the volcano, but it could go down at an angle down below here where the actual magma chamber and the feeder for it is, in which case the earthquakes coming up from the south would make a lot more sense, right? But there's something else here. Hold on. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Not again. First of all, an old quarry. Hashtag Tartaria. But a set of power lines. Set of power lines. Where does that go to? Goes down to the south. We're right next to the high voltage transmission lines again. Here's Lake Shasta. Looks like it just goes across the lake here. Up to the north. Keeps going. Yeah. Yeah, it does. All right. Where are we generating the power for this? Again, this is coming from somewhere. Where is this power being generated? Very interesting. I wonder if it's from up here. Flowing river or something? Well, I don't see any f source for the power, but there's got to be a power station there somewhere. We go right along the power lines. I have to pay attention to the power lines just in case. There may not be a relation on this. We're next to a quarry as well. Is this listed as a quarry blast? No. 17 kilometers deep. So we can rule out the quarry. Unless, there's no way they're down at 17 kilometers. It would be the deepest, this would be the deepest quarry in the world if it was. So surface fissure fracturing can happen from locations like quarries. In other words, they can create a perforation on the surface, like a little chip on the edge of a plate, and then the plate breaks all the way across when you apply pressure to the plate. So think of a piece of uh, a dish, dishware in your kitchen, and you chip the edge of a piece of ceramic, and then you go put extremely hot coffee into the cup that's somewhat cold. That little chip, that break, can spread throughout the whole cup and break apart when the right amount of heat or force or pressure is applied. That just happened to me. That's why I'm using it as an example. So get a little chip on the side of something, and right next to it you see a spread or break, even though it's 17 kilometers down below, it's actually down below the location. All right. That's where our first earthquake is up to the north. Then we have a ring of earthquakes between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake. Now, I'm not going to pull the coordinates on those. We're just going to go and look up Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake, and we got our whole ring of earthquakes all the way around them right here. See it? Do you see the surface feature there that's between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake? Do you see this? Well, first of all, there's a bunch of earthquakes going around it, but... This is actually what I think is an old caldera of some kind, unidentified by professionals. There's a bunch of earthquakes that always go around the outside edge of this thing. On either side of it, we have geothermal features. I showed them a thousand times. Steamboat springs on one side. Geothermal field where they've drilled in to get all the 
Steen. And on the north side, same distance, no less. Up here on the north side, we have another geothermal field called the Needles at Pyramid Lake. Tufa deposits and so forth, some of the biggest in the world. And right there, in between the two, what looks like an old caldera. It's also lined with its own volcanoes, which also lends credence to it being an old caldera. It's got smaller volcanoes lining the edge. Earthquakes going around the outside edge. Fires have been breaking around the outside edge of this thing over and over and over again. Earthquakes, fires, and it, it's lined with volcanoes and two geothermal fields. What do you want to tell them? What do you want to bet? It's an old caldera. Do I get to name it since I found it? I'm calling it the Casimirio Caldera, named after uh, Casimirio Cervantes Herrera. Herrera Cervantes, I don't know if, that, if I'm spelling it the right way or not, who lives there, and he's an earthquake forecaster who's learned my method and doing an extremely good job. Anyway, that's what we're going to call it, if I get to name it. Kaz's Crater. Kaz's Caldera. Down to the south, we have a triangle of earthquakes that goes on the California, Nevada, and California, Nevada border, both sides. That is in the middle. There is something there as well in the middle of that quote-unquote triangle shape of quakes. Again, one set of quakes down here, one set of quakes over here, one right at the border. Do you see what's here? Our other known supervolcano. This is Long Valley Caldera and Mono Lake, Mono Lake. There it is. So triangle of quakes around it. The earthquakes out to the east are going over to Monte Cristo Hills again, which is another volcanic feature. None of these are going to erupt. They're all getting hit as a flow, and this flow is going down and hitting the volcanoes, of course, spreading over to the east. As we go over into southern Nevada, we're back down to our nuke test sites again. They're not doing nukes here now, but I bet your ears perked up if you're a new viewer. Nuclear test sites are getting hit. Just like the quarries, humans, when they detonate nukes in the ground, a kilometer or less down into the ground, it creates surface fissure fracturing. These are all underground nuke test sites. And we got information on all of them or most of them. We can just, you know, click on this one. U.S. nuke operation Arbor Plomo, May 1st, 1974, less than 20 kilotons there. What else do we have? U.S. Nuke Operation Divider, September 23rd, 1992. 20 kilotons. 92 now. Boy, you know what? I always think of, like, nuke tests, like, back a long time ago and stuff. But 92, I was what? Uh, I was a sophomore in high school. Punk rock. There's me with my mohawk, Doc Martin boots. Studded leather jacket, moshing around, to, you know, anti New World Order music and so forth while they're doing nuke tests out there just west of me in the ground. Just great. Doesn't go wrong there. So, a line of earthquakes going down to the nuke sites. I wonder why. Well, again, there's a, a wave. One more time, what I want you to take away from this whole broadcast if you're new is there's a seismic wave that's spreading out across the planet, waves in some cases, but a wave that drops off the earthquakes along the way. It's not that one earthquake causes the other. You have to randomly worry about quakes striking everywhere randomly. No, these waves are following the plate boundaries, the red lines that I've been showing you this whole update from the USGS map. They're following the red lines. And then when you get to a plate, when, when the wave reaches to a plate along the red line, it goes into the plate, and the plate absorbs it into its craton, cratons, and then the wave goes around it. Path of least resistance. So it's like a flowing river and watching a train going from point to point. You can actually forecast a trajectory for this. That's why it's a big deal. Why, why am I doing what I'm doing? It's a big deal to know that there's a seismic wave that flows around the planet, drops off earthquakes along the way, all about the same size. And that it gets absorbed by other plates and that you can plot it like a train going across uh, a trajectory, uh, trying to tr plot any kind of trajectory. The flow of a river that's flooding, it's the same thing. You can do this. If you're a professional listening, I challenge you to repeat my method. I've already published it, so it's not like you... And if you do repeat it, you don't even have to mention my name. Just go repeat it and start doing it. You know, there'll be, Everybody will give you shit for mentioning my name even. 
So you can leave me out of it. I'm not looking for some kind of big chest beating, you know, hey, I did it. It's me. Yay. I can make money. No, it's not going to happen. Sorry. I got to go do something else to make life work. But the method works. And you can nail an area down to about 200 miles and get it within about a magnitude so far with the method I developed. I hope some eggheads will step in and actually develop it further. Since I'm just the unlucky discoverer of this pattern of flow, it goes across it. Anyway, let's go down to the south. Let's go down to Southern California where we were looking for up to a 4.9 and a 3 point something hit. We were looking for 4.9, 3 point something comes rolling in. I don't know. I don't think that's the quake we're looking for. I think that we're still going to get that 4. And it's pretty much on the doorstep. Let's go down into the LA basin and just go take a look and see what's going on in central LA. It'll kind of tell us what's moving around the rest of the area. Jumping out of the nuke sites. Go down to the south. Middle LA. What's that? Dude. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Somebody want to tell me what's going on there? Have you ever seen anything like that? I just don't know. I just want to go see it. Let's go to the ground level, see what it shows. God only knows. Maybe it's just like some old kind of thing. Oh. Well, now wonderful. I don't know. It looks like they're excavating. So look at that. That looks ancient. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, all right. Enough weirdness. Let's back it out and see what's going on. Oh, wow. We're next to another pumping operation, just like all the others a few miles away. Big oil and gas. This is the Baldwin Hills oil pumping operation. This is the current remnants of it. Used to exist all the way out down here south to Inglewood. So see where it says Lenox and so forth? And the airport is there now. This all used to be a giant pumping operation. And the videos of it, or videos, the pictures and old film of it even, going into the 1920s. And then they started to build more on top of it, they would cap off the wells with a wood plug, a few bags of concrete, move on. Drill down a few thousand feet at the most, get the oil, shallow oil, and then cap it off, like I said, with a wood plug and a few bags of concrete. Here's our refinery. This refinery is actually built on top of an old oil field as well. They may even still have old produ uh, producing wells still on the property. They might. If you were to go and zoom around, you might still find a well nearby that's still pumping. All right. Anyway, we're right next to it. That's why I went and looked it up. Look, I already know what's there. In the middle of L.A. is our big pumping operation. We go over here along the coast or over here to the east. Let's go over to the east. Go see what's there. Yorba Linda. Oh, no. God, this place again. Glen Avon, Yorba Linda. You guys remember Glen Avon? This is how I found out about the capped off wells with wood and a bag of concrete. This guy came in down here, down at Glen Avon, down to the south, and was looking for gold, drilling, looking for gold. Or no, I'm sorry. No, no, no. He was drilling, looking for oil, and he found gold. And he reported it to the officials and then capped off the wells with the wood plug and the concrete and left. And then they came in and started pouring toxic chemicals into the ground to break apart the, the rock to get the gold and didn't tell the public. Now a bunch of earthquakes struck there. Hey, look what we've got. Another pumping operation. It goes over across the hillsides through the golf course and our earthquakes right on the other side. I would like to go see if there's any right here at the location, any actual wells. I don't think there are, but we're looking 6 to 10 miles, so we're definitely close enough. Got a nice, look at these houses. Look at these houses, real nice. Wait, what do we got going on here? What the heck? What do we got going on there? You ever seen anything like that? Wait. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's right there. There's an oil well. Look at that. 
I wonder if we can get it from street level. Hold on. You think they driven a car up in here? Wow. Cha-ching! Look at that. You got to have some serious money to live up in here. Wow. Somebody's doing all right. Remember me in your wills. All right, guys. Oil right there. Let's go over to the west. Malibu. Beautiful Malibu. I have family that used to live out in Malibu. They've now moved a few miles away, but they were living right on the coast. They were living the sweet life. La Vida Dolce. Okay. Leo Carrillo State Beach. Point Doom. Na NAS Naval Air Station. Point Mugu. And the weird feature out here that's been flattened and blurred. Wait, what is that? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You gotta be kidding me. Dude, guys, Google has placed, this is not a community place mark. This is a legitimate place mark from Google itself. Look, you have to zoom in on it, but look, USO base. Unidentified submersible object base. One, Pacific Ocean as the address. I can't believe it. What the hell? Who put this here? This is officially from Google, guys. This is a Google place mark. Look, I'll turn my place marks off. See? See places? Official Google Earth place. No freaking way, dude. Oh my God, that's so bizarre. This is so bizarre, dude. I'm sorry, sorry, this is a real time. I hate to call you dude. Dude, bro, bro, let me get my bong, dude, dude, USO base, oh my god. Proof of aliens, brother. I'm gonna put on my wig and do the aliens guy. Here, hold on, hold on, let's do it. Let's do it. I got it on my freaking community page. But it's not the aliens guy. It it but there he is. Let's change it to say aliens. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. This is insane. This is insane. So we got the earthquake next to the Naval Air Station Point Mugu, and now Google has actually placed an unidentified submersible object base with an address of one Pacific Ocean, California zip code 958. Should I write a letter to him? Sh should I? Should I write a letter to him? I should. I should write him a letter. Send it to one Pacific Ocean, California, USO base, and just see where it goes. My God, it's got an address. Now, why am I making a big deal about this, guys? An earthquake struck out here. We were talking about this as being possibly some kind of underwater submarine base tied to Naval Air Station Point Mugu. Secret base of some kind. This is down, what's our depth? We're, we're 2,000 feet down in the water. It's to be like some kind of James Bond type underwater lair base at the bottom of the ocean. you got to be kidding me, man. That is the most bizarre thing I think I've ever seen in the entire time I've been doing my updates on Google Earth. That's even more bizarre than finding the grow operations at Weed, California up north. It just I can't believe it. I should just end the update here. What the heck is going on? Do they have any more marked? Should I go down and look in Mexico? Do they have this one marked? This one. What's this one showing up as? Nothing. This is the one I was talking about a couple weeks ago. They tried to say it was a mistake from a few years ago. They did new bathymetric measurements. They did new underwater measurements. And it's still there. <laughs> anyway. Wow. All right. Wow. What a way to end it. All right. So a line of earthquakes going down to the LA base and out to our underwater sea base and two oil pumping operations. Nothing go wrong there. Still looking for a 4.9 down in Southern California, but this one steals the show. I'm just going to say it. That, that steals the show. What a way to end it. All right. Do you have an earthquake plan? Oh, Central America, South America. Really quick, guys. 
five same size going across the rest of the plate just like all the others there's no change here look at the spread on this and this will really tell you something's up look at the spread going around south america do you notice again we're looking at here's 4.9 and greater it's like there we go you might be able to see that somewhat equidistant spread going around all sides of south america following where our arrows are to the north to the south x x marks the spot hit x marks the spot hit and in between them hit by the combined total really and then on the west side it's the same thing it's an equal spread going around both sides of south america i would look in the middle for a new break to take place and they did say eh, yeah okay a 4.3 just broke at ecuador and a 4.5 down to the south do you see it now if we take the fours into account it connects in between the fives and does that perfect spread like a giant letter D. Or really, it's just really in the shape of South America. You can see that South America is blocking it like a wall, right? It's going, the flow is blocked and going around South America to the north and to the south. This is, again, this is huge geophysics wise, guys. If you're into geophysics, if you're a professor or whatever, guys, look, there's a freaking flow of earthquakes going around South America and it's following the path of the shape of the plate. And that proves that there's something going around the plates, not just the earthquakes. This isn't domino effect. It's more like leapfrog, that there's a wave that's somewhat equidistantly spaced on the peaks, standing wave, going around the outside, around like it's in a wave tank. And this is a rock that's blocking it in the middle, and it's easier for the wave to go around it. And that's why we are shaped this way. Do you see it now? Going around South America, for instance, it's like flowing molasses through the Caribbean and through South Sandwich Islands. 20,000 foot drop off here, 20,000 foot drop off here, volcanoes along the outside edge here, volcanoes along the outside edge here. I'll turn them all on so you can see them. Crescent shape of volcanoes across the Caribbean and a 20,000 foot drop off on that side. Crescent shape at 20,000 foot drop off and volcanoes on this side the flow around South America and the earthquakes go along the coast up and around this way along the coast and up and around down and around this way it helps to look to the earth at a side angle to see this what I'm talking about just with the orientation of the way people normally view things it might not actually be conducive to seeing it but you can still see it now it's a stepping stone path of the same size freaking quakes going all the way around South America and this is how I noticed it to begin with. Before the arrows were here, I just noticed that the earthquakes were doing that. That's why the arrows are in this shape and why they are the way they are. It's been doing this for 12 years or so that I've been watching. I decided to put the arrows on the map so I didn't have to constantly get on and tell you where to watch. Seriously, that's why the arrows are on here. Laziness. I got tired of getting on and telling you people are like, which way is it going to go, Dutch? Seriously, this is me t uh, 10 years ago. Which way is it going to go? And I'm like, well, it's going to go around to the north and down to the south. And people are like, what do you mean? Is it just going to go across? And I go, well, here, let me put the arrows on you. And the X's are where we watch it to flow to. And the D's are where we watch it come from. So like a well springing up and then flowing out around, over, across, back, and into the X's. And if the push is great enough, we go into the X. And we come back out at the antipode with new deep earthquakes. And the flow goes through the planet, comes back through. Or it goes back around. If it's flat, it goes back around. If it's round, it goes through. If it's flat and round, it's flat all the way around, it does both. I don't know. It just goes in and comes out the other side. It's like Scooby-Doo. You go out one side, you come in the other. It's like some kind of video game, Mario Brother. I can't explain why it's doing it. All I know is that it is doing it. Getting to the X's, and if it's a big enough push, goes back through and comes back out on the antipode with a new deep earthquake. Okie dokie. Man, I'll tell you what, making discoveries is hard in the face of everybody saying it can't be done and that it is not discoverable. It's even harder to present it to the world once you find it, let me tell you that. But I'll tell you what, you need to have an earthquake plan because who cares about any of this if you don't survive a freaking earthquake that you could have known about? Or at least had a plan to deal with. So in Turkey, we're looking for up to a new 5.9 to 6 to come in still. Look at Europe. Do you see it? It's a hot 
mess of earthquakes. Now take it up a notch. Look at all the fours and fives. Do you see it now? What would you say the general halfway point is between all of these earthquakes? The triangulated center point of this. I would say it's where all the rings overlap, which puts us right here. Do you see that? Where the rings from the 4.8, the 4.5, the 4.7, the 4.7, the fives, the fours, the fours, the fives, they all overlap pretty much right here. Okay. And uh, that's where we have the warning going. 200 miles east of Istanbul, which I told the, the lady last night when she asked. So now today, the new earthquakes show us where all the rings overlap, that general centralized point that think of this like a wave that's stuck in a tank. It's reflecting back and forth into itself like a standing wave building up. In the middle point, it should break again with a new somewhat larger earthquake. Could go up to 6.0. I'm thinking more like upper five. But either way, that's enough to knock down buildings. That's enough to cause major panic and damage on top of an area that's already been devastated. It's a different location, so you wouldn't call it an aftershock. That's why I'm watching. But I want you to understand why I'm watching. It matters. You need to know the why behind it, not just, oh, watch here. What do you think this is, some kind of casual weather forecast? We have to explain why this is new science. People don't, oh, oh, look, look, a new earthquake just struck there as I'm talking right now. When did this hit? Hit at 823 UTC. Or no, I'm sorry, 223 UTC. Three minutes ago. All right, check it out. A new three just broke right in the middle. It's just a small quake. Now all this does is, really, all it does is, well, and it doesn't do anything. It fills in the middle southern point and puts a new ring right over the center of where we're watching. It's getting ready to break there, guys. I hope I'm wrong. I hope it goes all the way out across out to the mid-Atlantic and we don't see a 5.9 in Turkey. I hope for the best, but I want you to understand why we'd watch for this, that there's a wave reflecting in Europe now, and the new middle point is where, this, well, where the 2.9 is right now. Glad you got to see that. Who else did I not mention? Hawaii. Hawaii. Oh, dude, 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 check this out. Hold on, we're not done yet. Let me turn the display capture back on. Let's go and take a look over at College of... Du no, no, even better. Goes West. I have to wait for 240 images to load here, guys. It may take a second. But what I want to draw your attention to is right here at the center of the screen. I'm going to blow it up a little. This is Hawaii right here where my mouse is. It's kind of obscured, uh, the, the white outline of the big island of Hawaii and the others going up to the north. Now just watch what happens here. So, well, <laughs> as soon as this loads, again, we're waiting for 240 high-resolution images to... There we go. So look at what happens to Hawaii here. Watch this. Again, Hawaii is right here where my mouse is. So yesterday... Starting about a day and a half ago, this giant system kicked up here. It's counterclockwise rotating low pressure system there. And it's pulling in off the tropical flow, which is down to the south. Here's the equator. And watch, just wave after wave after wave after wave of rain hitting. And then it stops and parks there, and it looks like it's going to do it again. That's where we are current. Now, people need to understand that there's a connection between water weight, a lot of water, and earthquake activity, especially in volcanic locations. So a lot of water can go down into the ground and can eventually make in contact with some of that shallower heat. And we could see earthquake activity solely from the water weight earthquakes and the mixing of the water and the magma down below at least a few, you know, a kilometer or so down in the ground. So there's the potential in Hawaii right now, I think, to go back up again, just solely based upon this with the amount of rain the volcano's in active mode there. Something to watch out for. How big could it go? It would be one of these big jolting fracture type earthquakes, almost like an explosion. Um, where it, I wouldn't call it a phreatic blast or anything. It would just be like water going down and it reaches to a crack break point. And we would watch between our current sets of earthquakes. Okay? So let's go back over and take a look. Where are our current earthquakes? Pahala, of course. That's a no-brainer. But we have a 2.4 all the way up here on the north side of Mauna Kea, right along the coast. That's at the slump there. 
We also have 2.4 back at Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa is going again. I would look between the 2.4 and Bahala. Where does that put us? East flank of Mauna Loa. Wait, hold on. That's Kilauea, isn't it? Hold on. Sorry, guys. I got to go look. I don't live in Hawaii. Earthquake up here at Mauna Kea. Earthquakes down here at Bahala. East flank. Yeah. Just north of Kilauea. Let's just say Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, north of Kilauea. I'd look for a new 5 to upper 5. Let's just say 5.5. .5. Significant. It would be enough to be felt across the area. And it would be solely based upon this storm activity that's coming over you again. The storm stuck there. Okay. Um, if you guys get a chance, go over and check Doing Hawaii and Two Pineapples over on YouTube. Two Pineapples uploaded a video of the rain, filling a five-gallon bucket in literally 10 seconds of water runoff off their roof. That's how much rain is going on there. So 5.5 incoming central Hawaii in the next few days. And I'm again, I, also I'm basing it on the other fives that are going around the plate too. I mean, I'm not just pulling 5.5 out of the air. It's just, it looks like it's going to be focused in on Hawaii without having us up here. Okay, up at Camp Chaka. Sorry, forgot about Hawaii. It happens from time to time, guys. I start blabbering on about this, that, and the other. You know, I didn't talk about the five down in Africa either. There's volcanoes here in Africa and what I would consider to be a plate boundary there in Africa. But where did it come from? It came from over here. It came from the middle of where we're going to watch for a big break to happen. Where we could see a seven over in Indonesia. Also could see our second seven over here at Philippines. So I'm thinking in the next week we should be dealing with at least two sevens in the West Pacific. The solar storm is not going to help things, but they'll tell us it doesn't affect, you know, everybody always has some kind of opinion saying it doesn't have this and it doesn't do that. Ask them to prove it. Oh, solar storms don't have an effect. Ask them to prove it. Say, like, do you have like something you can back that up on, like proof-wise that you've did, uh, like research you've done, or is it you just relying on somebody else to tell you that, some other research? Because we've seen earthquake increases after the solar activity. We have. But it's only when it's a charged particle storm that's coming to Earth that we really see the big increase. It, it's not like it's just when there's a solar flare that we see an increase. It's when the charged particles come scuffing their feet across the carpet of the upper atmosphere and ionosphere is when it, the Earth's magnetic field gets buffeted. That's when we see the earthquake activity kick up. So is it going to hit Earth? We have to pay attention. I don't know. It's not my foray. It's not my, my arena that I cover of the solar. As a matter of fact, I would recommend a guy over on YouTube who, he may, we may not share the same beliefs on weather modification and all that other crap, but the guy is top notch on the sun. I'm not kidding. Whether you like him or not, whether he likes me or not, I give zero shits. Suspicious observers. Go check him out for the solar. I don't know if we all agree on quakes. Doesn't matter. But he's great at the sun. So go check him out. He knows what he's talking about. It's when, it, when it comes to the sun. <laughs> High five, SO. You know what I'm saying, brother? Okay, all right. 8.33 p.m. Central Time. On the 18th of February, 2023. No, no, I don't know the guy, man. He doesn't know me. We don't talk to each other or anything. It's, it's, I'm just I'm goofing around. But I'm serious now. If you want to know about the sun, go check him out. Because he does cover that in detail. And it, I haven't found one thing wrong that he said in the sun. So. All right, I'll be around. We will save this as a video. I needed to get this out of my system, guys. It's been the roughest week I've had in years. And thank you for your well wishes. Thank you for all of you guys wishing us condolences. My family really appreciates it. They're all reading it. My family reads what's going on. They, they check in from time to time. And so, All right, save away. And let's get this over on YouTube.